Hi everyone, Pablo here from Unique Japan. How are you? I'm coming to you live from my home here in the UK. And I have a very beautiful wakizashi that I'd like to introduce to you. Uh, this sword is on consignment. Uh, of course, it can be shipped locally here in the UK or uh, elsewhere around the world. Okay, let's get to it. The sword is... Um, attributed to a swordsmith called Nobutaka, Hoki no Kami Nobutaka, from the Owari province. Uh, the sword stands at 51.5 centimeters in cutting edge. So 51.5. A wakizashi, of course, is between 30 centimeters and 60 centimeters. So it's a fairly long uh, wakizashi. And I like the curvature on the sword. It's 1.4 centimeters in curvature. Oftentimes you see a curvature of about one centimeter with Edo period swords. This one has a little bit more, which is uh, nice to see. The sword itself is, uh, let's see, it's been attributed to the Empo era, so around 1673 to 1681. So now one thing that on the Nakago, you'll see that the sword is unsigned. Now, it's not unsigned because it's been shortened. It's unsigned because it was simply never signed. This could have been, well, it, reasons for not being signed. People ask me this question a lot. Um, one reason could be that it was given as a gift and it was not appropriate to, uh, to sign the sword. It may have been that he was making swords for one of the daimyo families and it was customary not to sign. Another reason why maybe he was commissioned to make a sword for somebody uh, and presented two or three swords to him, uh, to this uh, client, and the client selected not this one, but one of the other two. Uh, and uh, in that situation, he decided not to, to sign this, the sword out of respect for his client. So um, regardless, the fact that it's not signed, this is a very nice looking sword, I must say. Now, it has a gunome midare hamon, which is typical of the Mino tradition, and of course has parts that are togari, which are pointed. But what's cool about this sword is that it has uh, arrowheads, like yahazuba, or like kind of dovetail-like um, features to the blade, which you don't often see, and I, I think it looks really cool. So I'm going to do my best to try and grab the temper line for you. Um, Here's, it's always a tricky part of the temper line, the hamon. But you see, it has got lots of, so, lots of movement to it. So if you're interested in a sword with a kind of a dynamic spirit, then uh, this is, this is one to, this is one to consider. You can see, even without me putting the light on it perfectly, you can see the outline of the hamon quite visible. On, on the blade. It's a fun sword. It's fun. It's a cool little piece. Cool little piece. So let's get to the other side. Okay, so there's that Yahazuba I was telling you about. You see how it kind of flares up on almost like little horns in a sense. Let's see if I can get my hands here like so. Around this area, it kind of flares out. See that these little points here? That's yahazuba, arrow notch. That's what it means in Japanese. Looks like kind of a dovetail. It's almost like a. It's like it, it's it's as if something like a, like a dolphin's, coming out of the water. Yeah, it looks great. Looks really pretty. Let's try and get more of the hamon. Nice, clear, and consistent hamon. Uh, a dynamic little piece. You can see a little tobiaki there, see a little spot? That's tobiaki. Dun, 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 dun. The shinogi is all in place. Yeah, it's in good polish. It's a fine, it's a fine piece. There's actually a little bit of mune yaki where they've kind of burned the, uh, the shinogi, on the shinogi rather. Yeah, I'm looking for it. Looking for it, there it is. So look on the shinogi, 
and you'll see a little, let's see, right there. You see how it's this area right there? You see how the little burn mark? So it's kind of cool. You sometimes see that on swords. So the Shinogi G has a bit of tempering as well. Okay, so that's the blade. Yeah, healthy, happy, like good little piece. Okay, so I'll leave that here for now, and I'll get into some of the fittings here for you. So the sword itself doesn't have a it doesn't have a shirasaya, but it has a koshidai, and we will start with the tuba. And here's the tuba. Kind of an older kokinko tuba. And that's a rabbit. You often you don't see rabbits very often on Japanese fittings, so once in a while you do. And that is waves on the ocean. And I found a cool little story about the uh, the rabbit and waves, because you often see this in Japanese art, and so I looked it up. Um and I found out that according to legend, a white rabbit crossed the ocean from Okino Island to the mainland at Inaba, which I'll get to that map in a second, by using the backs of sharks as stepping stones and thus appeared to be running over the tops of the waves. This story became the theme of a no song that translates roughly to while the moon floats over the ocean, a rabbit runs over the waves. I thought that was a nice little story uh, to share with you. Here's a, a map of here's a map of Japan, old map of Japan. And so here is Oki Island. On my iPad, it appears to be backwards. Hopefully, it's showing forwards to you. Uh, but here's Oki Island, and and they went over here to Inaba. So it hopped all the way over over the Sea of Japan to Inaba. So a great little story as part of this uh, of this blade. Owari, by the way, is down here on uh, not too far away from from Tokyo, which is on the other uh, where's Tokyo? Musashi. Well, it's fairly far away actually. Okay. Okay, there's that's Musashi and Owari. Okay, good. So that is the, the tuba, and I will now get into the, and I'll put everything together for you. Here is, if you love dragons, here's a rain dragon on the fuchi, and this is just dynamite. Look at that. Yeah, I mean, very well, very well done. I asked one of my associates in Japan what school they think, and they think the Fuji Kashida is from the Yanagawa school from late Edo period. Certainly late Edo period, that's pretty obvious. But the detail's awesome. It really is beautiful, and it kind of just pops out 3D-like. Look at that. It's really cool. You know, you know, the Japanese dragons have three claws, right? And you can see that with this, uh, with this dragon. And the back on the Kashida. Look at that. Awesome. See how the head just kind of goes up in the distance there. Try to get that focus in for you. And then on the Manuki, the mystery Manuki. Uh, this uh, Koshinai, by the way, is from the late Edo period. On the Manuki, on one side, we have a samurai. So here's the, here's the samurai. We know it's a samurai because you can see a tachi there, right? There's the sword. Boom, sword, samurai dude. And on the other side, we have some kind of noble, I think some kind of nobleman. Kind of riding a cloud, it looks like. Hard to tell. But uh, yeah, some fine looking um, Edo period Manuki. We had the, the, uh, I, uh, the, the hilt rewrapped actually. The, 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 the silk before was a little bit uh, frayed, so. So we had it rewrapped, but we kept the old Samikawa. So you see the big nodes, the ray skin is all, is all from 
late Edo period. And in fact, there's a there's a certificate stating that this whole sword is from the late uh, the Koshirai is from the late Edo period. So put that. Here's a look at the uh, the scabbard. I'll put a sageo on later on. Uh, the, the scabbard has a very beautiful finish to it, and you can see how the 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 um, the scabbard, the saya, is rounded. And this rounded part uh, suggests that this was uh, a sword part of a daisho at one point, which I think is very pretty. So very good. See, Japanese art is all about fine detail. If you get close to it, then you start seeing this lovely grain pattern. Uh, from a distance, it just looks like a black scabbard. Right? That's the difference between Japanese art and other Asian art that's more garish and and in your face. The Japanese are, are, are never that way. Uh, on the other side, a flip side, like you often see, which suggests again that this was part of a daisho because there's a kozuka here. And the kozuka is of a dragon. It's a nice nautical work. This is a crawling dragon, not a rain dragon in this case. And this, of course, just slips through and have an Edo period uh, uh, kogatana on there as well. So there's the there's the Kozuka. And we put everything together. And here's the a look at the Habaki. The Habaki is copper with silver around and you have a kind of a rain pattern on on the Habaki. Looks good. Looks good. Good sword. Kind of reminds me of my first sword. It's has a, it's a, an element to it. So I'm just going to put the the sepas on. The sepas, by the way, are are wrapped in gold, copper base. You don't often see this anymore. Very important that you make sure that you put the sepas on the right way. The part that doesn't have gold goes towards the suba. People also ask me which side goes for the for the tsuba. Um, always, you know, the the hole, make sure it's pointed upwards, and then the kozuka hole goes to the left side. So it's pointing, so blade up, and put the kozuka hole on the, on your left hand. Putting the, the rest, the other sepa on, and now I'm going to put the suka on. And then, yeah, it fits good, fits nicely. on here, and then scabbard. Just gently put in and coast through. All right. So that is a look of the sword in its scabbard. Comes up nicely. If you want, we can build a uh, shirasaya for the sword. It's an additional cost, but it can be done here in the, uh, in the UK. But here's a look of the sword. Uh, in its hilt, and looks great, you know. On display, it's going to be just fabulous. Fabulous, fabulous. Okay. I'll give you the uh, certificates. So two certificates of authenticity with the sword. One, they're both from the NTHK, NPO, non-profit. And here's a look at the cover. All right. And the inside shot with the, with the nakago, of course as traditional. These are different uh, stamps uh, by the judges that reviewed uh, this piece. Uh, as always, we will provide translations for the, for the certificates. Okay. And here's a look at the certificate for the, the Koshidai. The Koshidai has the old wrap here, which was a kind of a black wrap with the Sageo. And Again, we'll have all that information. All this information, the, the big block of text that you see in the middle here, is information about the Fuchi and the Kashida and the Tsuba. It's all there. Okay. So, I think for somebody who's looking for perhaps their first sword, great gift for someone, um, just uh, want an authentic Japanese sword from the Edo period that, that has a lot of character to it in the blade and also, you know, fully fitted with the with Koshidai, I think this is a terrific little piece to consider. All right. Any questions, please let me know. As always, 
Thank you for your interest and continued enthusiasm. All the best. Cheers. Bye.